Do you want to crush it as a freelancer going into 2019? What is up people? Welcome back to Satori Graphics, the home graphic design content right here on YouTube. I was thinking about being a freelancer going into the new year and what you guys want to learn and using the feedback that you've provided in the comments in past videos. So today I've got a step-by-step -step method and an action plan that's going to help you become a better freelancer in the coming year. So I'm going to quickly use an analogy to explain my method of the action plan and the step-by-step -step process. If you want to make fire, you need three key components to make that fire. And don't worry, I've not gone crazy just talking about fire randomly. It is relevant, so stay tuned. So to make fire, you need fuel, so like wood or coal or something like that. You need oxygen because fire requires oxygen to burn. And also you need a spark or some kind of heat source to actually ignite the fire. All of those three things combined lead to a fire. And I've been thinking about this to help you guys in this video. And the three main things I can think about when being a successful graphic designer as a freelancer is first that you need to have the projects, you know, you need to have work to show. Then you need a portfolio website to actually show that work. And then you need a strong presence on social media or online. Now I've gone over these things before, but I'm really going to break them down and hone into how to actually use them going in 2019. So firstly, you need the actual projects, you need the work. So I'm going to link loads of things down in the description box below. There's actually quite a lot of design competitions going in 2019. So if you're struggling to get work or projects, you can, you know, work on a competition. And if you actually win the competition, then that's great, that's a bonus. But if you don't, you've still got some work to show off, keeping in mind that it is actually good work. And I have to add real quickly, you obviously need skills and, you know, a creative flair. And that goes without saying, so I'm not going to add that in today's list. But another great method for, you know, gaining more projects and work is to actually use mock briefs or practice briefs. And again, I've linked some things down in the description box below that can lead you to having actual relevant projects in your portfolio of work. But another quick and easy way to get some projects under your belt is to ask your family and your friends, people you know locally, you might have a small business, they might need a logo redesign or a business card or something like that. So ask the people closest to you and also check in your immediate local area, our businesses and see if they can you know, provide you any work as a graphic designer. So once you've actually got your work projects, you then need to show them off properly and efficiently. Now I've got some really cool and useful links for you to use today because you might think it's difficult or expensive to have a portfolio website, but that's not actually the case, you know, especially going into 2019. Now, firstly, you might be aware of Behance. Now, Behance is really good for communicating and interacting with different designers, but you can also upload your work on there. However, they've actually got a pro upgrade where you can actually transform your account into a portfolio website with a specific uh, URL and also domain name. Now, this actually costs $100 per year, which is actually quite cheap. But here's the kicker. If you've got a Creative Cloud uh, account with Adobe, you now have access to this Pro Behance account totally for free. That's pretty awesome. But if you don't, $100 is still not that expensive per year. Now leading on from that is formats. And this is a great way to quickly design your portfolio website by just dragging and dropping. And if you're not a web designer, then it's quite easy to do it anyway. And you can get your very own portfolio website with format for as little as $7.99 a month. And then also you've got things like Squarespace and Wix, which again are really easy to use. And you can make your website for as little as $5 up to $35 per month. Again, all the links are down in the description box below in today's video. But as you can see, it's not that expensive or difficult to make your own portfolio website. And the reason why you need to do this is because it looks so professional when you're engaging in social media or trying to get a client, that you've got your own corner on the internet that's not just a cookie cutter, you know, social media platform. It's actually your space, your graphic design space. So if you put all of your best work into that space as a portfolio, it does look a lot better and it's going to get you more clients a lot easier. After the third point, which is social media, I do have something else to tell you about in relating to crushing it as a graphic designer in 2019. But yeah, social media is, I keep talking about this, but it's really, really essential that you do utilize social media to your advantage as a graphic designer. Going back to the fire analogy, you can have all of these three things, you know, the oxygen, the fuel and the spark, but if one of them is not that great, then it doesn't work so well. So for example, you could have some wood and the wood's damp or wet. It's not going to cause a fire that easily or at all. So just try and make sure that your social media activity is on point this year going into 2019. Now I'm talking about Facebook, Twitter, Behance, 
and also maybe Dribbble. You can multi-post across the platforms and just recycle the same, you know, artistic social media post, but just get things out there and just get a conversation going with other designers and just communicate, you know, just be yourself as a graphic designer on social media. But there's a wild card here, and that is YouTube. Yes, that's right. The very platform that you're watching me on right now is actually amazing for graphic designers. You can just show your work progress or your workflow. You're designing a project or some digital art or something like that. And you could upload these videos over, you know, over time once a week or once every two weeks. And you'd be surprised by how much traction you can gain, but also by how many offers you're going to get. When you start to get recognition on YouTube, you have many people contacting you for business. It's happened to me, even though I don't take on many projects right now, and it's probably gonna happen to you if you get enough exposure and traction on YouTube. But like I've said in past videos, Twitter is actually really awesome because you can utilize hashtags to get work. You can actually check out the video linked in the corner if you wanna see more about Twitter and hashtags. So yeah, finally, it's all well and good having these three components for being a graphic designer in 2019, but you need to actually manage the time and you need to break them down. So let's use the example of actually having a portfolio website. You can say to yourself that by February the 1st, you need to have that portfolio website up and running. You know, set yourself that goal, put it down in the calendar somewhere, like Google Calendar, for example, and then break down that task into mini tasks. So to get a website, you need to have a domain name and also web hosting, but you're also gonna have to, you know, design the artwork and set it up to be posted on your portfolio website. So just break down each individual task that needs to go into that end goal and just make sure you work your ass off towards getting to that goal. And coming up now, I'm critiquing some of your guys' work because you did send him some interesting and some awesome designs. So let's jump into the critique. So I'm not going to show all of the submissions that were sent to me today and I might use the other ones for the next video next week. But the first design is a logo by Ally and he's made a logo for the Music Fort. Now I love the concept of using a speaker and audio waves to represent a kind of fort or a castle and it's a nice and strong robust design. However there are some things that I probably change and experiment with and the first thing is the typography because it does need to be addressed. I feel it doesn't fit well with the logo symbol and I feel it's a tad disjointed in general. The changes I've made on screen were not me spending a whole lot of time doing them, they're just quick suggestions and kind of food for thought. Also remove the play and the pause buttons at the very top because I feel the symbol needs to be more simplified somewhat. And in the third design, I removed the outer waves completely to make it even more simple and the lines in the middle are thicker to give the design more impact at a distance. Also I played around with the typography some more too. Now my suggestions here are to simplify the design and focus on the logo type too. Now it's a great concept and it's a great start but I also feel the blue might be the wrong colour of choice for a music logo of this nature. I feel something bright and bold would be more fitting. The trick is to spend some time refining and simplifying the design, but let me know what you guys think. The next design was sent in by Anita, and it's an advert of sorts promoting a business. Now there are some things I really like about this design, and firstly Anita has taken some of the colours from the bed and the fabrics to use in other elements of the design which just ties everything together really nicely. Also, the composition is pretty good too, with the two blocks in the bottom left and bottom right corner mirroring the bed and the pillows in some way. However, in the bottom right, I feel things get too complicated and too chaotic too. Now I understand the logo needs to be used here, but there is just too much going on in a small sector of a design, and there's also too many fonts being used for my liking. So maybe try and just use one or two fonts, and then simplify this part of the design if possible. Also font pairing would be a wise move too, and just try and focus on tidying up this section. Also, in the background of the design, I can barely see some text that reads something about flowers. Now I think this text needs to be removed completely, because firstly it's not legible, and secondly it just makes the design too busy and confusing. But I feel overall, it's a solid design, it just needs a bit of work from a typographic standpoint. Now the third design was sent in by QWERTY and the sender said they have only been designing for a few months and considering that's the case, this is actually a very good vector typography design. Now I like how the curves are smooth and parts of the design loop into each other. And I understand the colour effect that has been used, it takes inspiration from the TikTok logo. And it might be a little bit confusing on the design from afar, so maybe you can try and fatten up the lettering itself 
you know the white areas in the middle, so that the colour effect doesn't really make things too confusing around the edge. But yeah, overall this is a really nice typographic design for sure. And lastly today is a neat vector design for Christmas. And I do hope that everyone had a really happy holiday season, if you do celebrate Christmas of course. But yeah, the design is monochrome, and I do love monochrome designs. I love how parts of the design in the distance are lighter in colour, and the nearer objects are darker. That's a handy technique to use for painting and drawing, as well as digital art too. Now the only real issue that I have, is the typography used on Christmas doesn't fit too well. I'm not sure if the typeface actually suits that part of the design. I like that you've tried two font pair though, and it pretty much does work well together, but I just feel the typeface for Christmas isn't really fitting. But what are you guys' thoughts? But yeah, thanks to everyone for sending in your designs, and I will try and do some more critique next week on Friday. And also subscribe to my second backup channel linked down in the description box below too, and also like and share this video on social media. But until next time, design your future today. Peace.